Hello everyone, my name is Noah and I am a Summer Program Assistant here at the Kamloops Library. I am so excited to delve right into today's craft, so let's go ahead and get started and make these adorable upcycled planters together. So just a quick overview of the supplies required for the craft that are included in your kit. These include an empty plastic bottle, um, glue, newspaper strips, white paint, paper napkin strips, Mod Podge decoupage glue, as well as a foam brush. There are a couple things that are not included in the kit that you'll need to get, uh, and these include scissors, a bowl to mix the paper mache mixture in, uh, as well as water. So go ahead and get those things, and then let's delve right in and get started. So first off, we are going to start with our empty and clean plastic bottle. So we're going to start off by cutting our plastic bottle into those three pieces. I do want to caution everybody just to be very careful when doing this process, just because I did find that the side of the bottles uh, can be a little bit difficult to cut through. So the technique that I found worked the best for me was to start off by making a small hole in the side and then moving in with the scissors to kind of cut around uh, in a circular motion around the circumference of the bottle. And because we are going to be discarding that center piece, you can feel free to kind of just rip through there um, and cut through the middle section to gain access to the bottom that's going to be the main piece of the planter. Um, and as you can see by the end of the video, uh, the three pieces that I'm left with are not perfectly symmetrical or proportional, um, but nonetheless, the craft is still going to turn out amazingly, and it's all part of the fun. Um, and then once you've discarded that centerpiece, you can see that the, th the two other remaining pieces are kind of just going to fit together one on top of the other. So here is a little look at what it's going to look like at the end. The top piece is going to fit into the bottom piece of the planter and just provide a spot for the soil to sit as well as drainage for any excess water. So now we're going to be moving on to the paper mache portion of this craft. So you can see that I've started with some school glue. Um, all that I have at the office here is unfortunately some plastic cups but hopefully you will have a bowl um, at home that you'll be able to use to mix this just because uh, it's helpful to have something more shallow to kind of dip the paper into. So I've gone ahead and used about half as much water as I was using glue. Um, I unfortunately mixed too much, but in the kits that you're being provided with, you're certainly going to have the correct measurement. So use half as much water as you have glue. Uh, and then I'm just going ahead and taking a second to make sure that it's really well mixed. Uh, it does kind of take a minute just to make sure that the glue has incorporated all of the water uh, and it makes it easier to kind of dip the paper into and to stick it to the plastic. So once you've gone ahead and mixed that, um, you can start with a strip of paper and you're just going to dip it into the mixture. Uh, you do want to make sure that it's quite wet but you don't want it to be dripping so that's why I've gone ahead and kind of taken off a little bit of excess of the mixture. Um, you don't want it to be kind of slopping off the planter. And then whenever you've done that, you can go ahead and just place it right onto the exterior of the plastic. You can see that I've gone ahead and kind of formed a little bit of a lip over the top of it. Um, this is just to give it a finished look. You don't want to go too far onto the inside just because there is going to be soil and water going in there and you wouldn't want the paper to kind of disintegrate. So just a small lip to finish the look. Uh, and then I do encourage all of you to maybe do two layers, kind of like use your best judgment. There should be uh, enough paper included in the kits to do two layers and maybe even a third, uh, considering that the planters are pretty small. So complete this process and then allow it to completely dry before moving on. So this is the final product after the paper mache has been complete. It is still wet, but it is completely covered. So now once the paper mache has dried, we are going to move on to painting the base white coat. Um, you can see me breaking out the plastic cups again. I'm getting some paint ready. Um, and I did read that tempera paint, which is the paint that we're all going to be using, is really good for paper mache. So that is the type of paint that we've selected for this craft. So you're just going to go in with your foam brush and you're just going to take your time brushing over it with the base coat of white. 
Um, and I will say that this paint is a little bit thinner, so you're going to need to let it dry and do multiple coats depending on how opaque you would like it to be. Um, and then in the following clip, I'm going to show you just an easier technique for using the foam brushes for this step. So this is the easiest technique that I found for the foam brush. Instead of brushing, you're just going to kind of dab the paint on with the edge of the brush. So now we're going to be moving on to the Mod Podge Decoupage Glue and Paper Napkin step. So this is just kind of a decorative step to make the outside of the planter look pretty. Um, in the kits that you've been provided with, there are included um, assorted colors, uh, including purple, green, and blue of the same pattern of napkin. For my own planter, I opted to make use of all of the colors, uh, and I aligned them in a vertical fashion, but you are free to do whatever pattern you want, or use as many or as few of any of the colors included, or if you have napkins at home that you would rather use for this step, then you're more than welcome to use those. So I'm going in with the same foam brush, I just took a couple of minutes and washed it out from the white paint strap, um, and you do want to make sure that you get a fairly good coating of Mod Podge on the bottom, just because we want to have a really cohesive look when we stick the paper napkin strips on there. We don't want to have any little bits and pieces that are sticking up, um, just because we are going to be dumping water into these things. So you can see I've put a good layer on and I'm just taking my first strip uh, and I'm being careful because this is quite sticky so if you want to rearrange uh, you risk kind of ripping the pieces of napkin but within reason it should all work perfectly and then you're just going to take your fingers and tamp down any pieces that didn't stick. So once you've completely covered your planter with the paper napkins, it's going to look something like this depending on the unique combination of colors uh, or of another napkins that you use to cover it. In between the previous step and this one, you're going to want to let your planter completely dry just because we are going to be painting over top of those paper napkins and we wouldn't want them to rip or fall apart. So now you're going to go back in with that foam brush and paint a layer of Mod Podge over top of the napkins. It is going to appear milky and white, but I do promise you as soon as it dries, it's going to be completely clear. And this is just going to serve as a protective layer against water uh, for the top layer of the napkins. So this is what the planter is going to look like after you've completely coated the paper napkins with Mod Podge. I would encourage you to leave it for several hours or even overnight before using it and concluding this craft. I hope that you all enjoyed this craft as much as I did. This is the final product of the planter that I made. Um, I'm honestly really happy with it and really impressed with this craft, and I hope that you all had a lot of fun uh, doing this with me, and we will see you again for craft to go number two later on in the summer. Thank you!